Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Thursday, May 27th, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen, ready to break down this three-game NBA DFS slate with a series of Game 3s. Big turning point in these series. I'm looking forward to breaking, breaking it down for you. Going solo, of course, here on Thursdays. This is the typical day off for Coach. Just before noon on Thursdays, I always think of uh, NCAA March Madness. Thursday at noon. Uh, in that week, first weekend of games, is there a better Thursday at noon? And uh, Coach, I think he just thinks it's every week, it's NCAA tournament week, and he goes on vacation. But uh, no, just kidding, Coach. Uh, typical Thursday, day of rest, much deserved, and he'll be back on tomorrow. So with this three-game slate, we usually take a quick look at the night before, and sometimes it's to learn our lessons about DFS, sometimes it's to help us with the next slate. Sometimes it's both. And one thing that happened last night, which I think is worth mentioning, and we'll incorporate it into the show today, is that blowout from Philly in the early game. And on a three-game slate, one blowout can really move things in a big way. Um, you know, Coach was talking about how those Philly guys don't get their big minutes, then it can really hurt you. And, and that's what happened last night. Uh, Ben Simmons smashed it, but imagine what he would have done if he'd played the full game uh, through the fourth quarter. And, you know, Harrison and Bede were, were solid while they were out there, but just didn't get enough minutes to get it done. Uh, so that that hurt us a little bit last night. And then John Morant, wow. We ended up putting him in our GPP lineup, but uh, we didn't get him in enough of our other lineups, and he was terrific. Wow. Just uh, awesome in that in that late night game. Um, so hats off to to Ja, uh, but exciting night overall. Again, and you know the ups and downs. Unfortunate with the incident with Russell Westbrook, um, but other than that, uh, some good stuff. And and looking forward to a big night tonight. So thank you for tuning in. We're gonna build some winners here on FanDuel and DraftKings. We also build the uh, Yahoo lineup for our members, but usually don't talk about the pricing on here. We're going to stick with FanDuel and DraftKings pricing. And on the setup for tonight, we have one earlier game. It's at 7.30 Eastern. Then we have the 10 o'clock and the 10.30 games. In the opener, it's a 2 nothing lead for Milwaukee. And I mentioned the Philly blowout because I wanted to talk about it in the context of this game three. I think the biggest question mark here is with Milwaukee and Miami's does Miami put up a fight here and keep this close? They just got absolutely smoked in game two, 132 to 98. Milwaukee was absolutely on fire from distance. I mean, that first quarter, wow. They just put it on Miami and never looked back. And, you know, Miami is just, uh, they're not quite, uh, you know, in the, in the groove like they were in the bubble. Uh, Oladipo still out of course, and Bam hasn't been himself for some reason. So they've got a real tough task here with Milwaukee now with the momentum, the confidence. Um, and Milwaukee, the favorite here, one and a half points uh, over under 225. It's the second highest total on the board from betus.com.pa, our presenting sponsor. And why would I talk about a blowout in a one, one and one and a half point spread? Uh, it's actually the tightest spread here on the board. We've got the Lakers favored by seven. We've got Portland favored by four. Um, you know, I think it could be a close game, you know, game three, it, it happens a lot. You see these patterns in the NBA playoffs, teams go down 2-0 on the road, they come back and they get game three. And sometimes they end up losing the next two if they're a much inferior team. Uh, and it could happen for Miami, similar situation could happen for the Celtics against Brooklyn. Uh, so, so I think Miami could win this one. It could be close, but it also could be a blowout. And you need to think through that and and take a stand. And when you project a blowout or a close game, or if you don't project it, you know, sometimes if you build a lineup without really thinking about it, you are, without really realizing it, making a stand on whether it's going to be close or it's going to be a blowout. And sometimes it's good to circle back and really think through it uh, on purpose and uh, and play it out. So if you think this one is going to stay close, then I think it changes the slate and you, you you're more interested in guys like Giannis and Drew Holiday and and Butler for sure. So 
let's let's look at this one as if Miami is going to battle here and keep it close. It's a tough challenge with you know Miami's uh, I'm sorry Milwaukee's great offense. They're sixth and their top ten defense. Miami, of course, also has a great defense. They're sixth, but their offense not as efficient. They're seventeenth. Pace wise, of course, we have the contrast here: Milwaukee fast, Miami very slow. Uh, on the Milwaukee side here, looking at the visitors. Giannis has really been strong here, uh, definitely in consideration. He's pricey, uh, but he's he's in the groove right now. Drew Holiday, I really like the way he's playing. A uh, little bit expensive on FanDuel at 8,500. Pretty good value on DraftKings. Brooke Lopez, Dante DiVincenzo, good mid-tier options, especially if it stays close. Middleton just lives at that 8K price range. Uh, didn't do as much in that second game. Obviously, he was the stud in game one. Uh, if you think it's going to stay close, you could go back there. The bench. How about Bryn Forbes stealing the show in game two? Six of nine on three-pointers. I think there's going to be a lot of attention on him. Uh, can he do it again? But, you know, I think one thing that gets lost in the shuffle with all the talk about Bryn Forbes, did you realize that Pat Connaughton went five for nine on three-pointers? And both of those guys, it's a perfect example. You know, they, they even though they only get 18, 20 minutes, sometimes they come in, they don't do much, they don't hit their threes, they don't hit value, but they can smash because they're cheap and they do shoot a lot of threes. Milwaukee shoots and hits a lot of threes. They've got that great pace. You get the extra possessions. So you could go to Forbes or Connaughton. Um, Portis, P.J. Tucker, I'm not, not as interested in. They're just not as involved here, especially P.J. Tucker. We know he's out there primarily for defense. Uh, but... You know, Giannis is is looking pretty strong here for my first lineup. Uh, Drew Holiday also in consideration as a payup. On the Miami side, I think Butler has to step up here. I mean, this is their backs are against the wall, not in the elimination sense, but in the likely elimination sense if they don't get game three. Uh, he is pricey on FanDuel at 91. Uh, 84, a little bit easier to stomach on DraftKings, uh, but he's the guy I have the most faith in. I don't I don't have faith in Bam right now, so I don't want to go there. Ariza didn't get many minutes in that blowout, uh, but we know he was solid in game one. Uh, Nunn and Robinson, not my favorite choices here. Dragic, really kind of leading that second unit, more so than Hero. Uh, so probably would lean towards Dragic or Dragic or pass in, in that section of the slate. Uh, Dwayne Dedman, let's talk about him. Uh, he was, you know, with Forbes, he kind of stole the show there in, in game two, 19, nine and two in 21 minutes. Um, he, now with, with a guy like that, who I, I've always liked Dedman, I did not play him on that slate. Um, but when the guy goes about 10 X return, it always gets my attention. If I played him, then it's cause I played him and I'm excited about it. If I didn't play him, then, you know, I just look into it, evaluate it and try to figure out if I think he can approach that in the next game. And I think he's worth considering not because I think he, uh, will get 10 X return again, but if he gets 18 minutes and goes 10 and six, uh, on DraftKings, especially, he can get you six or seven X return. He's only 3,100 over there. So I like Deadman here as a possible bench play. You know, if you're if you're playing with that utility spot on DraftKings, he's right in that same price range as Forbes and Connaughton. And if he's getting 20 minutes, I think it's a little easier to project him for those rebounds that can help you with his floor. So I, I think he's worth considering. Not, not a lock, uh, but... A guy like that, you get a little extra confidence, uh, goes a long way. So uh, game one here, I am I am probably going to lean towards projecting it as a close game and, uh, and getting exposure to a couple of these big guys. All right, let's move to game two. Much later in the night, 10 o'clock Eastern, Phoenix and L.A. We've got a 1-1 series here, low scoring, 99-90 and then 109-102. Total today, 210.5. Lakers favored by seven, as I mentioned. And this is just not uh, a DFS favorable environment. 
we know with these defenses that are first and ninth pace, 26 and 16. The only thing you like is Phoenix's offense. They're fourth. Lakers still inefficient at 24th. But what will Phoenix look like if Chris Paul is out or hampered? He's listed as probable. So I I do think he'll play. Obviously, he's dealing with that shoulder issue. And that was big in game two uh, because we ended up with campaign in in most of our lineups, and he was absolutely dominant off the bench. What a great performance. Uh, uh, 19-3-7, and I believe, 33 minutes. He smashed. He's another one of those guys close to 10x that you got to evaluate here. If Chris Paul starts, then... You know, we 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 pumped the brakes a little bit on campaign. His price has gone up a little bit. But this could be a situation where Chris Paul's a bit of a decoy, uh, whether, whether that's intentional or not. They may get him out there with the hopes that he's healthier and can play more minutes. But if he has a setback, then we're going to be right back to pain with big minutes. So that's a tricky situation. I, I'm not going to play Chris Paul. In, in case he has a setback, I don't think you need to go to him on this slate. Uh, Payne would, will probably be in some of my lineups either way uh, because, again, just like Deadman, if he, even if he doesn't have 40 fantasy points, uh, he can still be solid uh, at, at his price. Let's look inside the numbers a little bit more with, with this game. Booker uh, came down to earth a little bit with his shot numbers down uh, from – round 25 down to 17. Uh, and he, he was effective as a scorer with 31, but didn't have the peripheral stats. And that's the risk with Booker. Um, it, it happens a lot. So that's the, that's the question with that a price tag around 8,000. Uh, do you get the other stats or not? Crowder. Okay. How about some stats on Crowder? Look at his three point shooting in the series. 0 for seven and then one for six. I did have a lot of exposure to Crowder last game, and it was disappointing because you'd have Booker or Payne set him up for a three, and you're hoping to get that correlation, and then he just kept missing. Um, But I I do like his minutes, just shy of 30 each game. He's getting those attempts. Uh, So this is another spot for a bounce back, I think. Crowder, good price in the 4K range. And uh, if he hits a few of those threes, then then we're going to be in good shape. Aiton followed up that awesome game one, 10 for 11 with 11 for 13. So we like what he's doing. Uh, they continue to find ways to get lobs to him. Um, despite LA's great interior defense, uh, that's just been a breakdown so far. Now, what we don't like with Aiton is that in these two games combined, he has one stock. So he's not smashing defensively uh, to go along with that great shooting percentage. Uh, at his price, I think you could look there. Decent option. Uh, you know, a little risky, um, but uh, in consideration. Cam Johnson got good minutes again. He's had 23 and 27. Didn't do quite as much in game two. You know, he's another value option if you want to pay up for a couple studs on the slate. On the Lakers side, that little motivational talk from uh, LeBron certainly worked for AD. He did play like AD in game two, 34, 10, and seven, got some stocks and uh, you know gave you that return you're looking for if, you, if you're going to pay up for AD. Here in game three, um, you know, my instinct here would be that it might be a little bit more balanced where AD comes down to earth a little bit. LeBron does a little bit more. He shot uh, 16 times from the field, AD 15. By the way, Schroeder had 16 field goal attempts. And if that's going to happen again or something close to it, then LeBron and AD are not my favorite payup options here on this slate because I do anticipate that it will be lower scoring again, especially compared to these other two games. Uh, So right now, I'm leaning towards fading LeBron and AD just because of their prices and the game environment compared to the other two games. Schroeder, though, uh, I don't know if he'll get 16 shots again or go 24-3-3, but he's a nice price. 5,800, 61 on FanDuel. He's playable. KCP, don't like don't like what's happening with him. Not enough shots. Drummond played a lot better, 15-12, and 12, but again, he only played 24 minutes. 
So that upside is a little bit limited. Uh, Vogel went with Gasol off the bench in the last game for 20 minutes. There was some talk about, do they bring Drummond off the bench, play AD at the five, and create more spacing? Because Drummond really clogs up that lane. And Vogel decided, no, we're going to stick with Drummond. But on the bench, instead of bringing in Harrell, they went went with the Gasol. We know that he plays primarily on the perimeter, and he does open up the offense a little bit and can facilitate with some passing and even some three-point shooting. So we'll see if they go with that same rotation. I would think that they would because it worked in game two, but I'm not going to invest in Gasol um, or or Harrell because I just don't I just I don't think it's guaranteed the minutes uh, in that rotation. Uh, I guess if I had to play one, I would play Gasol, but uh, don't, don't want to go there. Kuzma, man, he just continues to play decent minutes and basically disappear out there. It's like the guy has great scoring upside, but it's almost as if he's, he's just trying to be invisible out there. 20 more minutes, only four shots. Uh, he's unplayable for me right now. Caruso, Hasn't done much yet, but he's getting the big minutes uh, compared to THT. So you could look there for a GPP. He's one of those guys that eventually he shows up with a couple steals, um, you know, and he's very aggressive. He'll go to the hole and, and score and and uh, pick up a few assists. So he's, uh, you know, playable for me in a GPP more so than, than uh, Horton Tucker, who's not getting the minutes right now. But... In general, I I don't want to have a ton of exposure to this. Like I said, I don't plan to pay up for LeBron or AD. uh, So it's more of a a mid-tier option, a a Schroeder, Crowder, maybe maybe campaign. All right, before we get to game three, just want to uh, invite folks to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate all the folks who've done that recently. And uh, also, jump in with us as a member, dfscoachtalk.com. Grab our full lineups on FanDuel, Yahoo. The core that we give out on DraftKings, it's different for cash lineups and GPP. Uh, And then when you sign up at DFSCoachTalk.com, we will invite you into our Discord with an email. That's where we give out all of our lineups about 20 minutes before lock. Uh, So DFSCoachTalk.com, grab the three-day pass or grab the playoff package, 111 you get a two-month membership, so it's a discount on the monthly price, and you get access to all of our sports, not just NBA. So you get our MLB lineups every day, PGA lineups twice a week. All right, game three. Denver and Portland, highest total on the board, 227.5. Portland favored by four. These teams have split, of course. Uh, the, the theme of this series is that the loser has scored 109, so first team to 110 uh, is the victor here. Um, game three, we have Barton and Dozier still out. It has been announced that Dozier is out for the entirety of round one. Barton's still a question mark here to get back in this series, but won't be there for the Nuggets tonight. And uh, really, that's the kind of the key injury news on the slate. Uh, of course, Chris Paul probable, but most of these teams are generally healthy. So uh, with Denver, that is that is a, a big loss for them because there's this fellow named Damian Lillard who is, is is on a roll right now, and it is Dame time, and he followed up a really strong game one with 42, 4, and 10 in game two. So they have not had an answer for Lillard. And as we head into game three here, I think the theme of this one is don't forget to give equal consideration to e- to each game. You know, you start to build your lineup if you're going through the slate like we do uh, in terms of the the start time of the games. You get the game, the last game on the slate, and maybe you filled out most of your roster. You don't have room for Lillard and Jokic. But those guys are playing like you can't pass them up. Jokic, just 30 points plus, flirting with triple doubles. Lillard, just absolutely smashing right now, putting the team on his back. And they they are playing like you can't pass them up. So give equal consideration to e- each game. Uh, make sure you play with it for a while uh, and, and figure out if you do want to pay up for these two studs. 
I, I think it's probably a wise investment and a, and a pretty safe investment uh, because we know with those guys out for Denver, Murray and company uh, continues to be the Jokic show and uh, he, he continues to play like an MVP. So I think Jokic is worth paying up for. The other uh, big uh, standout um, factor from game two that, I, that I'm looking at is that Campazzo and Monte Morris both played 30 minutes. So they played alongside each other. Austin Rivers only had 20 minutes. Um, both of those guys are in play. We, we, we've attacked the Portland guards all season. Uh, they're, they're a fair price. Monte Morris has bumped up all the way to 5,000 on FanDuel after that strong performance. Uh, Campazzo a little bit more. Um, Rivers becomes GPP only for me. You know, I don't like his, his, uh, volatility. Even if he's getting more minutes, he can have a dud where he only takes four or five shots. Like in game one, he can pile up the stats quickly. We've seen it a couple times with him as a nugget, but I would look more towards Composo or Morris as a, as a value option here, more of a reliable cash game option. Uh, Porter Jr. and Gordon, um, not as strong in Game 2 with that blowout. Porter Jr., much more expensive. Millsap, you know, he's the other guy like Deadman uh, from Game 2 in these respective series who gave us about 8, 9x. Uh, he was a key for us. Uh, 15, 7, and 3 in only 15 minutes. Do we go back to him? It's possible. Uh, you know, I, I still like the matchup against Cantor, just like we did in game two. So you could look at Millsap, Jamichael Green, uh, also worth keeping in mind because he got even a few more minutes than Millsap. He got 20 minutes, didn't do too much, but he's a little bit cheaper. So you may end up with him and he's the kind of guy who with 20 minutes, uh, could, could pay off that value. Um, he, he, we know he can do it given the opportunity. On that Portland side, you know, it, it is just hard to avoid Lillard right now. He, he's very expensive on FanDuel at 10-5, but he is paying it off. Uh, Denver, you know, Will Barton is not walking through that door tonight, and we know that Dozier's still out, so they just don't have an answer for him defensively. Uh, and I, I would go with Lillard over McCollum. That has really shifted here throughout the year a couple times where – Lillard carried the team for quite a while when CJ McCollum was out and we were riding Lillard and, you know, then McCollum came back and it, it shifted where Lillard was overpriced because he'd been playing so well and the usage went way down with CJ back and he wasn't a good play at that point. But now we're back to Lillard running the show. I mean, look at the last game. He had 24 shots. McCollum only had 12. He shot it well, nine for 12, but it, you know, is not doing enough other than scoring. Could CJ step up here and be the difference maker at 7,300 on both sides? Yeah, he could. He could smash. Um, but if I only had one lineup, I would go with Lillard over McCollum again. Powell, I'm not not looking at here. Really the fourth option offensively for Portland. He showed the downside in that game too, where he scored pretty well, but didn't do much else. Nurkic fouled out in game two, a little expensive on FanDuel, decent price on DraftKings. Uh, you know, you could look there if you don't want to pay up for Jokic and you don't want to take the take the risk with Aiton that he has one of his duds. Covington, oh man, got to mention him. It's like uh, Kuzma is his role model or something. 37 minutes last game and three shot attempts. I mean, Covington gets in these stretches where he just doesn't do much except defend. He's an awesome defender. But he has so much potential offensively with stocks. He can do a little bit of everything. And he's he's really cheap now. I mean, he's only 200 more than Millsap on FanDuel. He's less expensive than Monte Morris on FanDuel. Uh, GPP, you know, if he if he wakes up, with all those minutes, he can smash that price tag. If he keeps playing like he's been playing, then we're in for another dud. So it's a roll-the-dice situation on Covington. 
Same thing with Mello. Great game one, bad game two. Only one for five from the field. Uh, I would think he would do better here in game three. Cantor, uh, not going to play him. Uh, Simons, uh, dud in game two in the blowout after a strong game one. Uh, probably won't go there either. So that is the rundown here of the three games. Hope that helped helped everyone get started on their lineups. We're going to work uh, up until lock here on mixing and matching, playing with the different possibilities to finalize the cash lineup on FanDuel and the GPP lineup. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, we are calling it a terrific takedown Thursday at DFS Coach Talk, and that is the plan. We're, we're planning to take it down tonight. So uh, jump in with us. DFSCoachTalk.com is the website. If you have any questions, reach out to us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. You can also find me at Language Olympic, and you can find the coach at J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. So thank you again for tuning in. On behalf of the entire DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen, and join us again tomorrow as we look to crush it in DFS.